Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Gross. I'm the founder of Dr. Dennis Gross Skincare, and I'm a board-certified practicing dermatologist in New York City. Today, we're going to be talking about hyperpigmentation. We're going to talk about all the different types of hyperpigmentation that, that come into this condition. We're going to talk about the science of how this actually occurs, and then we're going to talk about the different ways to approach it with some ingredients will help your condition to improve. The bottom line about pigmentation is it always occurs because of the excess production of pigment, of this thing called melanin. Melanin is a substance made by human skin that has color. It actually looks like a stain. If you did a biopsy of pigmentation in the skin, it would look as if we took black paint and literally just threw it against the wall and it has a splattering effect. That's what it looks like inside the skin. It all starts with the cell in the skin called the melanocyte that makes melanin, pigmentation. The melanocytes are the same cells that make pigment for sun tanning. But what happens with pigmentation disorders is it goes awry and it starts to make this, the pigmentation haphazardly in excess and for reasons that are not really what it's designed to be, which is a sun protector. Melanocytes have a very particular place in the skin where they live. They specifically live in the top layer of skin called the epidermis, and within the epidermis, specifically at the lowest layer. And what they look like is they look like keys on a piano, and the melanocytes look like the black keys. You don't see them every single time, right? They're like every eighth key or so is a melanocyte. That's usually what it is and they look darker in color. The science of pigmentation begins with those cells, and then they have an enzyme that actually is responsible for the chemistry of production of this substance, of this molecule called melanin. And the enzyme, which is nothing more than how it, the, the, this, this substance is manufactured, is called tyrosinase. And tyrosinase is an enzyme that actually takes another molecule, some amino acids and, and substances that are used that are then added upon by the use of this enzyme to create a larger molecule called melanin. And what happens with the melanocyte is it forms the melanin inside that cell, inside that little tiny structure. And then, very interestingly, the, mel the, the melanocyte then expels that melanin. And why does it expel it? Because remember the goal of melanin. It's designed to create a barrier to really protect the skin from ultraviolet light. So the melanin now gets released from that cell and it starts to coat the entire thickness of the epidermis. So the individual starts to look a little tan. With more sun, what happens? You get even more tan. You get a deeper darker tan because the skin is thinking that as the sun exposure increases, it needs more melanin to protect it. So you get a darker tan. That is all melanin. Now we're talking about this disorders of melanin production. So we have to understand more about melanin production here. What happens is after the melanocyte makes it and it's released, there's literally this step, this brilliant step of the skin where it transfers from cell layer to cell layer as it ascends, rises up in the epidermis to eventually coat the entire thickness of the epidermis with melanin. That step is called transfer. So we now understand that melanin starts lower down where the melanocytes lives in the epidermis and it starts to transfer and increase the production and then the number of layers of skin cells in that epidermis to eventually get the, mel the melanin uh, deposited in the skin. So this is where we now have the opportunity to intervene and help treat hyperpigmentation. So you have different conditions where, where hyperpigmentation occurs. And they're all related to the production of melanin in an abnormal way. So hyperpigmentation, extra pigmentation, 
are caused by several things very commonly. Too much sun, hormones, or inflammation. With hyperpigmentation due to sunspots, solar lentigos, they actually look like stains, like freckles on the skin. Now this is something that's caused by the sun, and I must tell you that it's actually a sign of excess sun. It's a sign of sun damage. It, I did melanoma research for quite some time in my career, and it was determined, we discovered, that there's a statistical connection between sunspots and the risk of skin cancer. So it's really a telltale sign that the skin has been damaged by the sun and sunspots are a warning signal that other forms of sun damage, it could be collagen loss and, and fine lines and wrinkles and sagging and all those things due to excess sun or skin cancer because the sun causes DNA mutations, causes genetic injury, leads to skin cancer, sunspots, are another form of hyperpigmentation. Melasma. Melasma is actually a relationship between usually hormones and sun and very often occurs mostly in women. Men can get it, but melasma is one of the conditions where you actually start to see areas of the skin, patches and zones of the skin showing hyperpigmentation. You can see it on the forehead. You can actually oftentimes see it on the cheeks very often on the upper lip. It's called the mask of pregnancy, and it's due to the fact that with pregnancy, there's a lot of progesterone, a lot of estrogen, and that can actually promote hyperpigmentation because the melanocytes, remember those are the cells that make melanin, have receptors, interestingly, for hormones. So melasma is one common condition. Another important one is called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. What happens is, is that when the skin is inflamed due to irritation, due to the immune system attacking your skin and you get redness and you get inflammation, oftentimes when that inflammation subsides as it resolves in its wake as an aftermath, the skin just produces pigmentation in the areas where the inflammation once existed. So here's the good news. There are things you can do. It can begin by protecting the skin from the sun. So if you see sunspots and you see freckling or even melasma or hyperpigmentation due to old inflammation, sunscreen is essential. To stop the production, the overproduction, the hyperproduction of melanin to begin with. So one of the key things we talked about was this enzyme that's called tyrosinase. And tyrosinase is an enzyme that certain ingredients actually can tackle. Things like vitamin C and retinol. Vitamin C has the ability to actually work on that enzyme and become what's called a tyrosinase inhibitor. The very enzyme that's related to the hyperproduction of melanin, excess melanin production, vitamin C gets into that cell and puts an end to it, stops it. It stops that machinery from, from synthesizing and creating more of this melanin. Remember, melanin occurs by a biochemical pathway where it's like a large train, where there's different uh, cars that are assembled to make that final molecule. Tyrosinase inhibitors like vitamin C work to stop that enzyme. The vitamin C is a sensational product to help get rid of that, of that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation in the old areas where the pigment existed. You can exfoliate. It keeps that cell turnover going. It keeps the sloughing going, co com continuing at a, at a facilitated rate. And that turnover also helps with the disintegration and the ultimate removal of excess pigment. You also must wear sunscreen because remember, sun plays a role. And soothing the skin with ingredients is also very important because many conditions that are inflammatory can be prevented and treated and lead to less inflammation, which in turn will lead to less hyperpigmentation. And what if all the above fails? What if after trying products, you're still not getting the results you're looking for? That's the time to consider 
visiting your dermatologist. There are treatments that can be done in the professional setting that are stronger, always safely done because doing something too strong can backfire in the treatment of melasma, for example. So, but the dermatologist can help you. One thing I want to make sure you understand is if a particular spot that looks like a sunspot is not responding at all, I do recommend going to the dermatologist and making sure, in fact, it is an innocuous sunspot. Perhaps it could be an early skin cancer. Sometimes, remember, melanomas have more than one color, hyperpigmentation, irregular edges, asymmetry, changing size. If those things are seen, that is not what we're talking about being a cosmetic spot of hyperpigmentation. This is something that may be medical and that's another reason to see the dermatologist. So in summary, how do we treat hyperpigmentation? You have your exfoliation, slough off, help disintegrate, get rid of that extra buildup, vitamin C, the big gun, a halt on that tyrosinase enzyme, stop the transfer as the melanin migrates upwards and forms greater and greater layers of hyperpigmentation. You have the tools, always wear your sunscreen regardless of what treatment you choose. So thanks for tuning in. I hope my words have helped you and educated you and empowered you to really make a difference in the way your skin looks with all the conditions that come under the topic of hyperpigmentation. If you have other questions or you have concerns, the MECA team are there to help you so that your journey will be successful.